Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the regular pentagon. So here we have a pentagon with five equal sides, which makes it a regular pentagon. Also what I've done is I've drawn some lines in here in such a way that you can really represent a regular pentagon by five similar triangles. And each triangle is an isosceles triangle, which means that these two legs of the triangle are equal in length. They are not equal in length to the side over here, which becomes the base of each of the triangles. So imagine when you take one of these triangles out here and you draw it on outside, it would kind of look like this. And notice we've called the sides over here, we call them R and R, we call this S, and then this distance here, we call that H, in such a way that the area of this triangle will be the base, half the base times the height. Now to find the perimeter of a regular pentagon is not very difficult. You simply say it's five times the length of each side since each side is of equal length. But to find the area, the best way to do that is to say that the area is equal to five times the area of each of the five triangles. So there's five equal triangles. If you find the area of each triangle, you multiply times five and you get the total area. So it turns out that the area of the regular pentagon would be equal to five times half the base times the height. Since the base is S, half the base would be half S times H. The only thing left to do is to figure out what H is equal to. Now that takes a little bit of trigonometry and it turns out that, it, that we can find H by saying that it's half of S divided by the tangent of 36, which is basically S divided by 1.453, approximated to three decimal places. For now, that's good enough. We'll just use that number in case we need it. But another thing we need to do when we look at regular pentagons is figure out the size of these angles. So we have the size of each of the five corners of the regular pentagon. We'll call that theta, and we'll need to find out what those angles are. Then we have the angles made by the tip of each of the triangles. That's this angle right here. We'll call that angle alpha. And then we have the supplementary angle to theta, and we'll call that phi. That is the outside angle. If we draw a line that continues along one of the sides, then the angle that's made by that line and the next side, we call that phi. The interior angle here is theta, and this angle here at the tip of each triangle, let's call that alpha. How do we find those three angles, theta, phi, and alpha? Well, it turns out for any regular polynomial, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, and so forth, the angle here in each corner of each corner is equal to the number sides minus two divided by the number sides times 180 degrees. Let's try it for a square to see how that works. Well, a square has four sides. Four minus two is two divided by four is one half. One half times 180 degrees is 90 degrees. And you know that the corner of each of the four corners of a square is equal to 90 degrees. So the same equation works for any regular polynomial. So for a pentagon which has five sides, this equation becomes 5 minus 2 divided by 5 times 180 degrees, which is equal to 3 fifths of 180 degrees. So we divide 180 by 5 times 3. That happens to be, let's see here, that's equal to 108 degrees. Let's see, 5 goes into 180, that would be uh, 10, 20, 30, that would be 36 times 3 is 180 degrees, that works out just fine. So the angle theta here is 180 degrees, so there's 5 angles of 180 degrees inside each corner of a regular pentagon. Now the top of each of the 5 triangles, since if you go around the circle like this, this is equal to 360 degrees, and there's 5 corners like that, you simply divide 360 by the number of sides, in this case, the same as the number of triangles. So this would be equal to 360 degrees divided by 5, which is equal to 72 degrees. Now all we have left to do is find the angle phi, which is a supplementary angle to theta. Now you know that two supplementary angles must add up to 180 degrees, which means that in this case, phi can be found by taking 180 degrees and subtract from that the supplementary angle, which is 180 degrees, which leaves us with 72 degrees. You can then see that the supplementary angle of each corner of the inside of 
the regular pentagon is equal to the tip of each of the five triangles. Both of them are equal to 72 degrees. And then we'll show you later where this equation comes from. So you might wonder, well, how do I know the relationship between H and S? In the next video, we'll do a little bit more explanation on that. But at this point, now you see that if you know the length of each side, and you can then calculate the relationship between H and S via this equation right here, you're now ready to find the perimeter and the area of each of the irregular pentagon. For example, let's say that the side of the pentagon is equal to 10. S equals 10, let's use that as an example. So to find the perimeter, that's equal to 5 times 10, which is 50. And to find the area of a regular pentagon whose side is equal to 10, you can say that the area is equal to 5 times 1 half times S, which now would be 5, because half of 10 is 5, times H, and H would be 10 divided by that. So that would be 10 divided by 1.453. And again, that's an approximation, but the three decimal places, that's pretty good. So this becomes, um, well, half of 10 is 5, so it would be 5 cubed, which is 125, divided by 1.453. equals, and that gives us 86. So in this case, the area is equal to 86 square units, and the perimeter is equal to 50. And that's how we find the perimeter and the area of a regular pentagon. That's also how we find the interior angles of the pentagon, which is 180 degrees, and we find the supplementary angle to be 72 degrees, which is the same as the angle at the tip of each of the five triangles when you draw the internal lines like that and turn the pentagon into five equal triangles. And that's how it's done.